Hello everyone! In this video we will look at how to set up a crouching system that auto checks if it can stand up or not using the first person template as a base. So let's go! First we need to set up a button to use for crouching, so we will create a new input action. You can find it by right clicking and selecting input and then input action. Let's name it IA Crouch and we can leave it as it is. Next, we want to assign a button to it, so let's head over to the input mapping context. For this project, it's called IMC underscore default. In here, we want to press the plus button and create a new mapping. In the drop down, select the IA Crouch that we created. Pressing the keyboard button lets us choose what key to map the action to. I want to use control, so I press that on my keyboard, save it and close the window. Now we go to the player blueprint. For the first person project, that is BP underscore first person character. The first thing we want to create is a function that can hold our different movement speeds. You can skip this and set manually everywhere, but it can get messy quickly. Name the function movement speeds and connect it to a sequence node. This will let it cycle through different scenarios you might want to use later, such as running or sneaking as well. From zero, connect a branching node and let's create a variable to use for this. Create a bool and name it something you can remember. I'll call mine is crouching. We'll drag the is crouching bool and set that as the condition for our branch. From here we will want to set the player's max walk speed. If you're unsure what the current max walk speed is, you can press the character movement component in the left and then in the right detail section search for max movement. Back to the left component section, select and control drag out the character movement component to get it as a reference and from that connect it with a set max walk speed node. Set this one to the regular movement speed you want, then duplicate it and set the new one to the crouching speed you want. In my case I'll set it to half, so 300. Let's shift these so it looks a bit nicer. Now connect the 300 speed one to the true output of the branch node, which means that if the is crouching bool is true, we'll lower the walk speed. Then connect the false node with the regular walk speed. Let's compile and save and head back over to the event graph. Alright, we'll start off with getting the IA crouch input we made at the start. Press the arrow and reveal more connections and let's alt drag out the is crouching bool we created earlier and connect it with the started output. Duplicate the bool and connect that with the completed output. Set the top one to be true and the bottom one can be left as false. So every time you press the crouch button, the is crouching bool will turn to true and when you release the button, it will turn false. Now let's drag out the movement speed function we created earlier. Duplicate it and connect it to each one of the variables. This will tell the function if we are crouching or not so that it can either lower or return the walk speed to normal. The bottom section is done for now, so let's focus on the upper one. By dragging out from the function and creating a new timeline which will control how fast it will go to crouch pretty much. Double click on the timeline node to open it up. The length section here is how long it will take to go from standing to crouching, so I will set mine to 0.5 for now. Also, check this used last keyframe button, it's needed for the timeline to complete correctly. Then we press the plus button here to create a new track and add a new float track. Right click the timeline to create the first keyframe, change its time and value to be 0, then create a new keyframe and set the time to be 0.5 and the value to be 1. Compile, save and return to the event graph. From the green timeline output, drag out and create a lerp node. This node will let us switch between two different values based on the timeline we created, where 0 is the first value and 1 is the second. Connect the timeline to the alpha input of the lerp node. In the A slot set 96 and in the B slot set 45. This will be the old and the new half height of the player character. Hold control and grab the capsule component from the left menu and then connect it with the set capsule half height node. Connect the lerp node's return value to the half height input. Then connect the set half height node to the timeline as well. Now we need to make sure that the camera also moves down with the player capsule. So control drag out the first person camera component and connect that with a set relative location node. Right click the new location input and select split struct pin to get each axis visible. And then connect the half height node into the relative location node. Now. 
Drag out from the lerp output node and create a multiply node, as we want to set the camera height a bit lower than the capsule's height. So, set the multiply value to 0.67 and connect the output of that to the Z location value for our camera. Now, we've completed resizing the player character and changing the position of the camera, so let's create a trace that will check if we can stand up when releasing the crouch button or not. We'll start with creating a custom event and call it Stand Up. We will also be using the event tick node, so let's put that up here and connect a sequence node to it. From the zero output, create a branch node. Now, there's not so much room here, so let's just quickly tidy up a bit. Alright, let's grab our is crouching variable and connect that to the branch's condition input. Now we want to run this if we have released the crouch button, so drag out from the false output and call the custom stand up event we created. Now let's head back to that custom event. From the event, create a sphere trace by channel node so that we can create a sphere above the player that checks if it's okay to stand up or not. For that to work, we need a start and end point for the trace. So let's get the capsule component reference from the left here. The capsule component is this thing around the player and camera that creates the player collisions for example, and we want to create a trace above it to see if it hits something or not. So let's drag out here and get world location of the capsule, and from the return value we want to create two add nodes. The first one will add 30 in Z, and the second one will add 90 in Z. Connect the first one to start and the second one to end. This means that our trace will start slightly above the capsule component and end at 90 above it. From the sphere trace node, create a new branch and connect the trace return value to the condition input, meaning that we are checking if the trace is hitting something above us or not. From false, or if it doesn't hit anything above us, drag out and connect it into the crouch timeline above into the reverse input, meaning that we will, as the name implies, reverse our crouch up again. And that's everything done. Let's compile and save and see if this works. Here we can see that pressing the control button lets us crouch and releasing it stands us up again. We also lower our walking speed when crouching down and regain it when standing up. And finally, if I crouch under here and release the button, I can't stand up, but moving out of the cover with the crouch button still released will automatically stand me up again. That's everything for this time. Thank you everyone for watching and have a great rest of your day.